Zed, do you remember when Sky first came to Sunday school? Do you remember that little girl? Sky, thank you. You have turned into a beautiful young lady. I never had any doubts, but it has been wonderful to watch how God has unfolded your life, and I look forward to so many new things, so thank you for sharing that today. Different little girl, different girl today. Different girl today. Our scripture today comes from the 20th chapter of John, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked, were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, and they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through believing, you may have life in his name. Now I love me some good magic. And many of you know this, but I have been blessed with a life full of magic. And when I was a child, our family would go to magic conventions because my dad was a part of the Brotherhood of Magicians. This guy over here was pulling money right out of my ear and I was pretty sure I didn't put cash in there to begin with. And this gal over here was being sawed in half and then she was wiggling her toes and then she'd magically put herself right back together in front of my very eyes. And my dad was famous at my childhood parties for making candy out of torn up newspaper that he set on fire. Now that's cool. I didn't know how each of those did these things, and I still don't know some of them, but I know that they can be done because I have seen it. Now some people doubt, they say it's a trick, but I don't care because life is much better when I believe in the magic. Others want to dispel the magic or try to science or logic it away or say it's all just smoke and mirrors. But I just sit and remember how awesome it was to be eating a piece of candy that had just magically appeared. I will always choose to believe in the magic candy. 
Do you remember the great news of last week? Come on, good people of Saren. Do you remember the good news of last week? It was just last week. Easter. Easter. The resurrection just seven days ago. It changed all of our lives, right? Nothing will ever be the same again, right? Remember? Remember the freedom we felt for just that day, for a moment when we realized that we were loved and forgiven and our lives were showered with grace and mercy and that it was all going to be okay. Remember? That's okay, because the disciples have forgotten already as well. So Act 2, Scene 1. Christ has been resurrected... But the disciples, instead of being out rejoicing and shouting the good news, have barricaded themselves in a room, locked the door, hunkered down, full of fear, waiting for the worst. Boy, do we know how to make God proud. Because God has done amazing things. So I think I'll hide, lock myself in a room. Could we be any more human? We have shut ourselves in, doubted the magic, or like the eagles share in that song about a hotel in California, we are just prisoners here of our own device. It is so easy to try to protect ourselves by locking ourselves away. And it may be the easier thing, but it is not the right thing. So act two, scene two. All of a sudden, Christ is in that room, in the prison of our lives with us, offering us peace. We are reminded of the good news we had so quickly forgotten or had had our doubts about in the first place or that felt magical, but then we just assumed really had been some kind of trick. But there Jesus is. He's all bright and shiny, telling peace to be with us. Now, unfortunately, I think most of us have an unrealistic sense of what peace is. We think that peace means that nothing will be wrong in the world, that everyone will love everything about everyone, and we will all join hands and sing Kumbaya for eternity. And on one hand, that sounds really great, but on the other hand, that sounds really... Well, I digress. I think peace is not that all is perfect. It is that all is doable. Do you hear that? I think that peace is not that all is perfect, but that all is doable. And we need not to fear because, well, because God is with us, walking with us, loving us, guiding us, nudging us, pushing some of you. But God is with us. To have peace does not mean that you won't have fear, but that you will have enough courage to overcome that fear and do it anyway, whatever it is that needs doing. It doesn't mean that there is no storm around you, but that you know the calm of the storm too, that you learn to dance in the rain. A few years ago, I used the song Brave to speak to the graduates of this congregation, and I want to share a verse of that song with you now. Everybody's been there. Everybody's been stared down by the enemy, fallen for the fear, and done some disappearing. Maybe there's a way out of that cage where you live. Maybe one of these days you can let the light in. Show me how big your brave is. 
I think bra that brave is the peace that God gives us and knowing that with God all things are possible. That's scriptural. That with God all things are possible. Not some things. All things. In fact, the next part of the scripture today tells us that Jesus said, As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And then he breathed on them. My favorite thing, the Ruah, I've talked about this before, the life-giving, spirit-giving breath of God from the Genesis story that brings order out of chaos and life out of death. It says that Jesus, he breathes it on us and tells us to grab hold of it, to receive it, a verb, something we have to do. And then we're supposed to go. I send you, he says. Get out of this locked room, out of this self-made prison, out of fear. So yes, now we're all revved up. We're excited, ready. We're believing in the magic. We can do this. We got this. But wait. Thomas didn't see Jesus that day. There are a few of us here that didn't see him either. So Thomas just can't do it. I just can't do it unless I see. I need some real proof. I need to know that this is no trick. I prefer to live believing in the smoke and mirrors or believing that there has to be some trick to it to explain it away or logic it away. And in doing so, I miss the magic. I miss the miracle. I miss the good news. I stay locked up in my prison. See, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Saren Church, when you hired Mike and I, you had no idea if you could really afford the extra salary. You didn't tell us that at the time, but I know. <laughs> it was a leap of faith 14 years ago. Almost 15. When we began to plan overseas mission trips and cultural exchanges, we thought, this small town, this small church can't do that. No, actually, we didn't think that. You didn't think that. You said, let's do this. And 20 youth, now young adults, have lives changed by those experiences. And when we thought it would be great to have a bus, we bought a bus. And when we, well, Mike, decided that we should build a splash park for the community, you said, yeah, we should. And you did. You carved upper rooms out of dusty attic spaces. You created a theater out of a room. When I first got here, that room was so full of stuff that we couldn't get rid of. You couldn't even get in the room to get the stuff out of. We put a theater there. You are a church that does and does and does because you believe you can. Sarah and Church, you are the best leap of faithers I have ever known. Hear this. You are the best leap of faithers I have ever come across. You take leaps of faith in people's lives all the time. Loving the unlovable, allowing Spider-Man to come to the nativity, doing things a little bit differently because you believe in the power of the story more than you fear getting it just a little bit wrong. What you have and what you are is such a gift, or as Saren's name stands for, a rose in the desert. Do you know that? You are a rose in the desert. I am so blessed to have walked part of my faith journey with you. And I am forever changed and will forever be able to believe without seeing because time and time again, you all decided to be brave over fearful and to know the peace that Christ offers. 
You have decided to go as God sent you. You have decided to grab onto that Holy Spirit, that Ruah, and be filled with life. You constantly decide to leap because you have amazing faith. So if you all have heard nothing else that I have said today, hear this. I may not have seen the risen Christ in that rock locked room on that day, but I believe because I have seen the risen Christ in each of you. I know that there is an awesome God passing out peace and filling people with beautiful life because I have experienced it right here in this very magical and miraculous place. And I don't care if some would say it's smoke and mirrors or I don't care if people think it is done by some sort of trick. I do care that I have seen so many lives changed and known so many lives to be changed, my own included, by this place. In the name of Jesus, our Christ, Son of our amazing God, and I hope you too can believe. I hope you too can experience the magic and let it be just what it is. A miracle. I hope you can break free of whatever fear might be holding you back in your own lives, in your family, in this faith community. Whatever cage you have put yourselves in, you, my friends, taught me how to leap in faith. Do not ever lose that. Because you can do whatever you put your minds to, and you can do all things through Christ. And although I shouldn't need to see it to believe it, I do believe it because I have seen it in you. Amen.